Hello everyone, participants of the OTGA training. My name is Muhammad Faid Gunafa and it's really nice to meet you all. So today I'm going to explain about module three, which is the processing module. I think it's the most excited module here. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to model the uh, current and wave for the Jakarta domain, which is the capital city of Indonesia. So uh, the first step where we're going to do is we have to check all the files needed. First one, we have to check the grid files. Uh, for the flow, we have this one here. And for the wave, we have this one here. And for the depth, we also have two depths, the one for the flow, uh, and then also the one for the wave. Okay, and then we have to check the meta files, which is the data for uh, winds, U component of wind speed and V component of wind speed, and also the pressure. We already have three of them. And the observation files, and, and also the tin dams. So after we have all the files we needed, we need to select our working directory. So I have created a folder here, which is this folder. After that, we're going to flow and flow input. So now the first step is to enter the uh, file description, which is Jakarta Bay. And then we're going to select the grid, uh, this one. And then the S closure, this one. And then the battery material file that we have prepared in the previous model. Uh, for the file specific that we are going to use Max for now. So if you want to know uh, what's the definition of Max, Min, and Min, you can read the processing model page 13. Here for dry points, we don't have it here. And thin dams, we have the. Uh, so the dry points, we don't have it here. So now the tin dams, yeah, we, we have this one file. Okay, uh, after we have selected the domain, we have to see the visualization area. So we can look at the uh, battery matter here. Is it good? Yeah, I think it's looking good. Uh, we can see that there is the tin dams that we have created here. So uh, the tin dams is used to define if there is some kind of a barrier or some kind of a thing that prevent the water from flowing. So we define a tin dam. There is a port, a sea port here. So we define this area as a tin dam. So um, uh, we zoom out again. Uh, we zoom reset. So I think it is uh, already a representative. Our model is good. All right, and then we're going to define the uh, time frame. All right, so we're gonna use the reference date use. Uh, this one is just for uh, for this tutorial purpose only, so you can adjust it uh, for your uh, by your proposed. Uh, for the sake of the uh, meta file input, we are going to adjust the time with the meta file. Uh, for the time step, uh, because the grid is already coarse, it's 50 meter, 50 meter. The resolution of the grid is 50 meters. So we're gonna have, we're gonna use five, just five minutes as time step because it is still sufficient, yeah. Uh, for the local time zone, we use zero because the meta files use GMT. Okay, so um, after that, we uh, we go to output, I guess. Yeah, so I'm going to explain here. So the store communication files, uh, I'm going to explain one by one. So the store map result is used to define the spatial map input. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. The store map result is used to define the spatial map output. 
So the interval here is for how often the model save the spatial map output. So we can use 180 minutes. So for the store communicant file, it's, uh, it's also similar to the store map result, but it's also combined with the wave model. We can also use 180 minutes, which is three hours. So uh, the start time have to be uh, adjusted. So it's similar to communication and the map file. And the iterative interval here is used for to define how often the model stores time search data and observation points. So it's like uh, if this two is for spatial data, this this one is just for the time search data. You know, uh, we can use uh, hourly data, sixty minutes, and also the result interval is used to define how often the model produces crystal file can be used for other models. So um, uh, if you know that the model has to be uh, has to be started first, uh, the first start is still the model is still not really stable. So you have to produce a rest of file. So the next file can use this rest of file as as the initial condition. So you can use 70, 7, 20 minutes. All right. Uh, after what we have done with this one. You're gonna have to process <clears throat> because we have a wind data and we're gonna do a coupling with the wave data. We check the wave also. And okay, the initial condition, because we don't have any initial condition just yet, we for the level zero. Uh for the boundaries here, we are going to create the boundary using Delft dashboard. So what we're going to do here is we're going to save the MDS files as Jagara. All right, ignore this message. So uh, for the boundary files, uh, we will use the boundary condition that we have created from the previous sessions. Here we have jagara1.bnd, and we're going to use astronomical flow condition. So uh, so it will. Uh, generate the astronomical component for the tide genera generation. Okay, so let's check the boundaries. So uh, we can see here that we have several sections. We have like eight sections here. So each section has its own astronomical condition. As, uh, each section has its own uh, astronomical components that is defined by the .bca files. So to check the uh, astronomical condition, we can uh, see edit flow condition. Here you can see that there are astronomical data for the each section. We have K1, O1, M2, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so we can see the other one. So we have different astronomical condition here. Okay, after defining the boundary condition, we can now define the physical parameter. We're going to change the water density to 1025 because it's uh, ocean water with the other. Uh, for the Gordon's formula, it is uh, advised to use manning to use 0 0.026 eh, 26. So this, uh, there's a lot of uh, research about the Gordon's formula depending on the seabed condition. So the sort of formula is, uh, is used to define how rough the uh, the seabed is. So um, there's a lot of publication paper about this, but uh, for this purpose, we're going to use 0 0.026. Okay, for the viscosity, we're going to use one because uh, our our model has a local local grid, not uh, not global grid like uh, South Sea Sea. And for the wind, we're going to use space varying wind and pressure. So this this wind and pressure is going to be defined by the meta files that we have downloaded before. Okay, now we're going to use uh, the defined the numerical parameter. We're going to use uh, flood because uh, we're going to observe how is the water interaction with land when 
the water elevation is higher than the land. So we're gonna we're gonna observe the coastal inundation of the model from the model. I'm gonna use min. Okay, and then operation. We can add discharge. Discharge is uh is used to define flow from the river or uh, sedimentation like dredging but because we don't have the files so we're going to leave this blank and for the monitoring we're going to have this one point that we have defined before so here we have five monitoring observation points you can see in the visualization area and zoom so we have five observation points here. So this observation point is going to define which point is going to the uh, generate time series output. So if there is a tide or wave or etc., and we can also uh, make another one like uh, edit observation points, edit mode, add. You can like if you want to observe some point here, just put this point. Okay. And then we will have another point, just uh, like uh, nail points. There you are. And then for the additional program now, here we are going to define the meta files. So there are five additional parameters here. First one is field WU. This is used to define U component of the wind. Field WV is used to define the V component of the wind. Field that will be is defined to a uh, pressure point. And for the air out and the path BND is there is the definition in the uh, in the model. Can check it out. Sorry. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Okay. So, okay, for the output, we have defined the uh, start time, stop time from the previous. Yeah, we have defined this before. The interval, the history interval. For the print, we're going to leave this blank. Details, we're going to leave this like this. All right, that's so that's how to make the, how to prepare the MDF simulation. Thank you very much.